Hello everyone, God bless you. And let me say praise the Lord as we welcome you to our Walk in the Word Bible study. Our teacher, Elder Milton Andrew, will join you in just a moment with part 10 of laying down a solid foundation as we go forth and study in the Lord's Word. It's been a tremendously uh, upsetting week. And as I know, many of you have lost loved ones and had tragedies occur in your families. And we know that God is no respecter of persons. Everyone will go through trials and tribulations. We all lose people that we love. This past week, we lost two people, Maria Sebastian and a dear friend, Cheryl Jackson, who has been very instrumental in helping us get established here in Jacksonville after we moved from Michigan. So we want to say our condolences to those families, pray for them, and we pray for all of you as well, because we know that you too have things going on in your immediate family and your extended family. We can't keep us safe from those things, but we can choose to reach out for the Lord as we go through them. And there's a little scripture that helps us as we look back and reflect on all the things he's brought us through. In 2 Timothy 4 and 17, it says, But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength. And you know, we need to not only because of that uh, instance, we need to look at all the things that are going on around us. And we need to make sure that we dedicate some time to the Lord every day. Set aside some prayer time. If you have a prayer closet, fine. If you don't, find a place where you can pray and have time with the Lord. Not only to speak to Him, but to sit and listen and let Him speak to you. And let me suggest that if you have a family at home with you, invite them to be a part of it. Let your young people see you praying. Let them be able to grow and step away, get on their own and look back and say, you know, my folks taught us how to pray. We had a praying household. God was in the center. That will help them in their lives as they grow and go forward because they won't be with us always. And we want to give them a foundation to build on and to stand on as they go out into the world. So let me bring Elder Milton Andrew to you now so that he can get started with our wonderful Bible study. God bless you all. Have a better week. Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly thank God for this woman of God that has down through the years stuck by my side and have done those things, I say exceeding and abundantly above all that I ask or could ask a thing. We thank God for you guys being with us today, trying to touch things. We ask that you begin to hit that share button because this voice of mine may be the only separation between a person and the pits of hell. You see, Satan is not playing. He's coming. He's taking all prisoners. He want your soul. He want you. And if he can keep you locked down, tied up and tangled up in the world affairs, and not paying attention to what God is saying and doing at this time, then he's a happy camper. So all of us have to join together as a team to go come against the forces of evil and the tricks of the devil. Precious Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, Lord, giving thanks and praise unto your name because we realize there's no name like the name of our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that you've given us to speak unto your people. We know, God, that there's an ordained group of people that you have set to hear this word even today. So, God, we ask that our mind be like your mind and our thoughts, Lord, would be like your thoughts, that we may say those words, Lord, that will line up with what the Bible says and speak unto the hearts and the minds of the listeners in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord once again. We're looking at laying down a solid foundation, part number 10. 
And I'm going to call your attention quickly to Matthew, the seventh chapter, our engine scripture and verse number 21. It reads like this. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And Jesus said, And then would I profess unto them, I would, I never knew you, depart from me ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. When we think about going to heaven, we have to have a solid foundation. The foundation that we have must be built on truth. It must be built on the word of God. Now listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Everybody has a belief system. Your beliefs comes from a group of ideas that you consider to be truth. Everybody has a source from where you got your belief, your ideas from. Now, here's the situation, and here's the trick of the enemy. He has tried to poison your source, that person that you trust, that person that you believe in, that program that you listen to. If that source is corrupt, then your belief system is also corrupted. Everything that you're standing on is a a foundation that's not solid. If a house is built on a foundation that's not solid, then my brothers and sisters, you will see later on in the years, cracks and, 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 and sinking and deterioration. And as a result, that house would not stand. It's going to fall down. These scriptures are giving us two ways to build our house. You can build it on a rock, or you can build it on sand. That choice is up to you. You have a chance to break out of your belief system if your belief system is not correct. Now, when we look at what the Word of God says, it tells us that there were people who were preaching in that name. They were doing the wonderful works in his name. They were building buildings and, and preaching to three and 4,000 people. They were casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Yet when Jesus came back and they came before him, he told them to depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I know you not. The same thing he told the five foolish virgins in Matthew 25. The same thing he's, he's saying to in Matthew 13, the wheat and the tear. You see, there are people who are sitting together in the body of Christ. Some of them are saved. Some of them are not saved. Some of them are building. They're building on a rock. And some of us are building our building on sand. You see, what's happening today is a message from the Lord. You got the pandemic, people are dying, you got the uh, racial tensions, and this is just a drop in the bucket of what is going to happen on this earth. We still got, according to 
prophecy, World War III. And World War III is going to take a third of the population on earth. That's seven billion people are going to die because as a result of World War III. You still got the locusts, the scorpions to be on the earth. Those that God has given permission to sting man and don't kill him, y'all, but to make him suffer six months, they're going to cry out to die and God is going to take away death. You still got the mark of the beast to even deal with. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy or you can't sell. You can't go to the store and get groceries. You can't even stay in somebody's house because the whole system is going to be locked up, tied up, and tangled up with the Antichrist. My brothers and sisters, this is not a place you want to be in. And then you got hell itself to contend with. What am I saying? Well, the Bible says that if we do not obey the gospel, then the Lord is coming back to take vengeance on us. He's coming back. Let's read it. I know you're tired of me reading it. But in 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse number seven, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that uh, obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we get to the gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ, we run into a problem, you all. When the church was established, this Bible church, they only had one gospel, and that was the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that says that God came down to this world. He died, he was buried, and he was resurrected that you and I might be saved. That's the gospels. But in the same books, that gospel also tells us what God expects us to do. In other words, when Jesus was on the cross, he said to uh, the people, he said to uh, God, he said, it is finished. In other words, look, I've broken the power of sin off of man. I, who knew no sin, I became sin that everybody who want to be saved can become the righteousness of God. I have conquered sin. That's what I did to provide salvation for you. But the world and the enemy has us believing that all we have to do is believe that and we are saved. But Jesus stopped from going back to heaven after he rose from the grave and he stopped by his disciples and he gave them a plan of salvation that they were to teach us. This is how you obey the gospel when Matthew tells us in 28 and 19, he said, go to all the nations and teach the gospel and baptize them. That's a commandment, you all. And then Luke, Mark says, go and preach the gospel to every creature in every nation. And those that believe the gospels and is baptized shall be saved. That's a commandment, you all. And then Luke tells us in 24 and 47, it says, look, it behooves Christ to suffer and die and arise the third day that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name, beginning in this nation, uh, to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And then John picks it up and say, look, I will tell you emphatically, except a man, is born of the water and the spirit, he could not enter into heaven. My brothers and sisters, that's all the church. That's all the church. That's all the Bible it was. It was nothing about ask the Lord to come into my heart. It was nothing about confess your, uh, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That was not 
the dictates and the direction and the instructions that the apostles gave to people who they witnessed to. So my brothers and my sisters, you got to go in history. You got to study your Bible and you got to begin to pray because if you don't, you're a victim of a belief system that did not come out of this Bible. That belief system is a residue of what the Roman Catholic Church did to the, this Bible church. And then the Protestant pulled away from the Roman Catholic Church, but they held on to the justification by faith and held on to the baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and stopped baptizing in the name of Jesus. Stop receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. My brothers and sisters, we're in trouble. Times are coming down, folk are dying every day. Hell has enlarged itself each day to receive the amount of people that's coming down to hell. What in this hell do you want? People are lying, stealing, killing, conniving to get to this place called hell. And I'm going to tell you, if hell was about a thousand years, maybe I can do the time. But hell is for eternity. Every day, every year, you're going to be found in a place of torment. Why would you want to go there when Christ has paid the price for you and I to reach that utopia of that place called heaven? My brothers and sisters, we have a lot to think about. We have a mission if we are saved to tell the world that, look, you're being, you're being lied to. You're being tricked. If your salvation is not coming through the gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ, if your salvation is not demonstrated through Acts, then you don't have any salvation. This book of Acts, in Acts 2 and 38, very simple scripture, and it culminates everything that the gospel book says. In Acts 2 and 38, when they asked Peter and, and the rest of the brothers, men and brothers, what shall we do to be saved? And Peter stood up and he said to repent, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the taking away of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My God, when you think of what Jesus paid to put us in the position to be saved, this is nothing that he's asking us to do. All he's saying is be obedient to my word. Repent means to turn away from you and to turn away from sin and to turn to God saying, God, I don't want this no more. I don't want to be a whole monger no more. I don't want to be a prostitute no more. It's not what a Christian does. I don't want to be on drugs no more. I don't want to beat my wife no more. Turn from it. And in your turning, God gives you a power to obey what he has designated for you to obey to receive salvation. So repentance is a form of death. When the Bible says you must be born again, the reason why some of us can't be born again, because you never died. You got to die first. That death emulates Jesus' death. Jesus had to die. Jesus was buried. Jesus was resurrected. My brothers and sisters, we have to die. We have to be buried. And we have to be resurrected to walk in the newness of life like Christ. So when you say repent, it only means to turn away from everything that's not like God and just turning to God, asking God for strength and to help, uh, strength and help to move me from a place that I no longer desire to be. All of us were there one day for the Bible said that we were conceived in iniquity. We were shaped in iniquity and uh, and sin did our mother conceive us. In other words, you and I were born in this world with the sentence of death upon us. 
for the wages of sin is death. God don't care how good he is. He is a just God. And the law says the soul that sinned, it must die. So God came and died in our place. Glory be to God. He had no sin. He became our sin that you and I can stand here and declare that we're the righteousness of God. And he said, repent. And you saying, oh, you don't have to do all that. Man, please. The Bible says, except you repent, you shall die in your sins. And then he says something else. He said, look, I want you to be baptized, not a few of you, every one of you, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's the problem for most of us, and I'm going to make it clear. You think that when you got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you obeyed Jesus. No, you didn't obey Jesus. All you got to do is follow what the apostles did. Ten days after Jesus told them to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Were they disobeying Jesus? No, they understood. You see, in this Bible day, there were no three gods. Three gods came during the Trinity under the Roman Catholic Church. They knew that here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord and thou shalt uh, love him with all our heart, our mind, our strength. It's one God. So when they came on the day of Pentecost and they told the people to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, they knew the name of the Father. They knew the name of the Son and they knew the name of the Holy Ghost. In the book of Isaiah 9 and 6, they say, a son is given and a child is born and the government shall be upon him. We're talking about Jesus, y'all. And his name shall be called Counselor, Wonderful, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The son was called the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. The disciples had no problem, you all. They had just got the Holy Ghost. They had just got instructions from Jesus. So when they told him, look, repent, turn away from your sins, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, they understood exactly what he meant. So they didn't repeat Matthew 28. They obeyed Matthew 28 and 19. So I tell you this. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, your sins have not been remiss. Remiss means forgiven. Remiss means canceled. Remiss means done away with. The only way that you can have your sins taken away is going down in the name of Jesus, not the titles. Understand, I'm a father. It's a title. I'm a son. It's a title and I got a spirit. It's a title. But when I go to Chase Bank and sign that check, if I put father on there, they're going to send that check back to me. If I put son, I got to put the name. The name of the Lord is your strong tower. The Bible says in Acts 4 and 12, there is no other name. No other name. There's no salvation in any other name other than the name of Jesus. No other name. The devil does not respect no other name. And the power that God gave to take away our sins is found in the washing of the water baptism in the name of Jesus. When we look in Romans, I mean Acts, the eighth chapter, we see Philip preaching unto the Samaritans. They believed Philip when he preached the things of Jesus and they were baptized in the name of the Lord. In Acts the 10th chapter, when they went to Cornelius' house, the Gentiles, when Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell. And at verse number 48, it says, who can forbid thee from being baptized 
and they baptized them in the name of Lord Jesus. And then in Acts the 19th chapter, verses one through five, verse number five, when they, these John the Baptist disciples, when they heard about this new birth, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and then they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. In all baptism, you're going to find Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ. There is none other name that anybody ever baptized in other than the name of Jesus. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. I am not trying to offend you. I'm trying to tell you what scripture, what the Bible has said and what it is doing. The problem with most of us, we have a belief system and we only gravitate to people who believe like we do. If your belief system is wrong, then you would never be able to hear what truth is. That's why I'm not popular because I'm preaching something that nobody want to hear. I want to hear what I want to hear but the truth will set you free. And I have no church. I'm not even asking for tithes. I'm here doing what God told me to do because God told me that there is a bullseye on somebody out there that's gonna hear this word. And it can be one person, it can be two. It doesn't matter. It's up to what God wants to do with the word, but only the truth is gonna set you free. So my brothers and sisters, I'm not asking you to leave your church. All I'm asking you to do is to do what God has said for you to do. Repent, turning away from your sins and turning to God. And after you repent, that's death. Now you're going to be laid down in a watery grave. When somebody died, they buried, just like they buried Jesus. And while you're being buried, your sins are being remiss. That scripture is right there. And then he says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, that's the seal. That's the seal. That, 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 that's, that seemed like the whole objective of this whole plan of salvation is that you are to get God living inside of you. For Romans 8 and 9 say, he that does not have the spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost, is none of his. You must have the Holy Ghost. Your foundation have to be built on the Holy Ghost, the repentance, the baptism in Jesus' name. That's all gospel. In Mark 16 and 15, he said, these signs shall follow me. Follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And in my name, they shall speak in new tongues. And then in Luke, he said, tear it out for the promise of the spirit. When it comes, he's going to endow you with, with a power. That's the Holy Ghost, y'all. And John says, except the man is born of the water, baptism in Jesus' name, and of the spirit, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. In Acts, the second chapter, when the Holy Ghost first came to the church, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared upon them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, just like Mark told you. In my name, you shall cast out demons and you shall speak in other tongues. The gospels told you this. Now God is fulfilling his word. And, 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 and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them Otherance. This is Bible truth. Look at Acts 10 and 44. The Holy Ghost comes 
speaking in other tongues. Acts 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Talking about the Gentiles, you all. And they of the circumcision, the Jews, which believed were astonished as many came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water? that these should not be baptized, which has received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, the Holy Ghost comes speaking in other tongues. You know, it gives me pause when I think of what Paul says in Romans 1 and 16. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew tells you to be baptized. Mark tells you to be baptized and tells you about the Holy Ghost. Luke tells you to repent and be baptized and tell you about the Holy Ghost. And John tells you to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm not ashamed of that gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. My brothers and my sisters, if you don't follow the gospels, you take the power of God away from you to save you. You can only be saved by obeying the gospels. Well, some people say, well, I got faith. I believe Jesus died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. Listen to Mark. In Mark 16 and 15, he says, go and teach this gospel, preach this gospel to every creature. He that believeth the gospels, and is baptized, shall be saved. You can't have faith in what Jesus says and don't obey what Jesus says. It doesn't go like that. If you believe it, you receive it. If you don't believe it, you ain't gonna do nothing. A good example is you all who are listening to me now and those of you who will listen to me uh, by playback. If you believe what I'm saying, you will be in your, your, your Google and you will be finding a church that taught and preach repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and the Holy Ghost speaking in other. You will be looking if you believe me. If you don't believe me, you ain't going to do nothing. You're going to click off and you're going to move on. Man, this is a matter of life and death. It's better to have this and die and don't need it than to not have it and die and need it. My brothers and sisters, logic goes against you. All the Bible is saying is to repent. You should have already done that. It says to be baptized in Jesus' name. You got baptized in the titles. Okay, let me get that right. I'm going down in Jesus' name. For Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. This is Jesus' church, y'all. And the gates of hell cannot prevail, prevail against it. And people have been coming against this doctrine from the time that it started. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. Then for 300 years, they preach repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. For three centuries, they taught that one doctrine. And then when the Roman Catholic Church came in, they changed the doctrine. And they went on for centuries. And when we finally broke away from the Roman Catholic Church, the Protestant churches never came back to Acts, never came back to the Gospels, never came back to the baptism in Jesus' name, my brothers and sisters, all you got to do is check history. And from that, we have these Protestant churches, and every day they got another way other than the way. They got another way to receive the Holy Ghost other than this way. They got another way to remiss sins other than this way. This is the book, you all, that God is going to judge us by 
when we come before him. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. So here is this Holy Ghost. Now, I tell you what. I know many people who, who have bought into this doctrine partly. They have repented because they could do that themselves. That's in their own volition. They got baptized in Jesus' name. Oh man, I just went down in Jesus' name. I obeyed the scripture. But when they got to the Holy Ghost, that's the only part that you can't control. That's the only part that has to be given by God and God alone. You see, when man finds something that he can't control, he quickly moves it out of the way. You can't move the Holy Ghost out of the way, my brothers and sisters, just because you can't be in control of it. The Spirit of God is God himself, and he will give it to anyone with a broken and a contrite heart. If you fully repent, all you got to do is look to God with your hands up. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. If you fully repent, if you fully turn away from your sins, you have died. Only thing stopping people from being born again is that they never died. If you die, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost right now with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And it will be a witness to you just like this Bible said. The Bible never said that you had to sit on a mourner's bench and something will touch you on the shoulder. The Bible never said, ask me to come into your heart. That's not Bible, you all. The Bible says to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And he said, I will give you the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. You don't even have to beg for it. The old church has got you tearing, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't even have to do that. All you got to do is reach up to God because he said it was a gift and receive that gift. That's the only way in, you all. You got to come in through the gospels. Please hear me. Please. Those of you who have not received the Holy Ghost, don't let people tell you that it comes any other way than speaking in other tongues. Don't let nobody tell you that. Job says, this is that that was prophesied about, not Job. Paul says, this, Luke says that this, the Holy Ghost, when it fell, was that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel that says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is the spirit of promise. This is the Holy Ghost. And he came speaking in other tongues. How can you be so sure, Brother Andrew? Nobody was a worse sinner than I was. My God, I think I was way on top. I was top sinner. I was in the FBI sinners list. And I repented just like the Bible said. I got baptized in the name of Jesus to take away all my lying, all my cursing, all my adultery, to take away every sin, the sin that I was conceived in. And then I went to God and asked him for the Holy Ghost. And God filled me with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's been almost 50 years and I ain't lost my step yet. Glory be to God. My brothers and my sisters, time is short. It's shorter than all of us realize. I'm 71 years old. The Bible says that the, the, the template is 70 years and by strength, 80. I'm 71. I've lived 852 months. 80 years is 960 months. I only have 108 months left if I follow the template that the Bible describes. What am I going to do with my 108 months? Am I going to be foolish? Am I going to be stupid? Or am I going to seek God like I've never saw him before? Because once you die, the Bible say, then the judgment. Look at Luke, the 16th chapter, and then I'm going to bring it to a close. Luke, the 16th chapter. This is a matter of life or death. This is a matter of eternal life 
our eternal death, being with the Lord forever or being separated from God and his presence forever in the abyss of hell. In Luke the 19th chapter, verse number, uh, chapter 16, verse number 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. We're all going to die. All of us are on the calendar. And ain't nothing we can do about it. When our date come, we're going to leave here. The problem is, the problem is where we're leaving here to go. So the beggar died. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosoms. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. We thought it was a joke. We thought it was storybook. But the Bible said, yeah, you in flame. You in hell. You burn it and won't burn up. But Abraham says, son, remember that in your lifetime receiveth thou good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all of this, at that time, there was a great gulf that he couldn't go on that side and you can't come on this side. Then he said, I pray therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. How many people have died and gone to hell and trying to get the message back to you? You don't want to come here. Oh my God. People on the earth don't want to hear repentance, but people in hell are crying to hear it one more time. You don't want to come here. My God, do what the man of God say do. You don't want to come here. This is not a place for you. He says, send, send, he says, say, look, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wilt send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. That, that's what I'm doing right now, my brothers and sisters. Hit the share button. Somebody, somebody's going to hear this and say, I don't want to go here. But this is the destiny of everybody who obey not the gospels. Read 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10 again. Everybody who obey not the gospel. Not, I confess with my mouth, not Lord come into my heart, but the gospels repent be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. He said, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. You got me. If the anointing of God can't reach you, nor would a dead man coming from the grave have any effect on you. My brothers and sisters, as I said, time is running out. You have to make some choices. You have to find a place where you can be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. If you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's not the gospels you own. Nobody ever baptized in the name of those titles. They all baptized in the saving name of Lord Jesus Christ. And that didn't come until the Catholic Church took it over and all of those doctrines they brought in. The Protestant churches rebelled, but they never came back to repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus, and being infilled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. Precious Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you, Lord, for your word is true. 
I dare not call you a lie, Lord, by saying you didn't say what you said. Lord, do this. Touch hearts, Lord. Move minds, Lord, that they will not call you a lie, that they will always do exceeding and abundantly above all they think that you ask, because that's what we ask of you. You all be blessed. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Until next Friday at 12, have a great week.